Hi, I'm John Ainsley from Doulos. I was a co-author of the System C language standard and also of the TLM 2.0 documentation. I'm going to answer the question, what is TLM 2.0? So TLM 2.0 is literally version 2.0 of the OSCE TLM standard. Let's unpack some of those abbreviations. OSCE stands for the Open System C Initiative. That's an industry consortium that promotes System C. System C itself is an IEEE standard and a C++ library, complete with an open source proof of concept simulator. And you can get more details of System C and actually download the source code from systemc.org. TLM in turn stands for Transaction Level Modeling. Transaction level modelling is an abstraction level above RTL, whose primary purpose is to accelerate simulation. And it does that by replacing all of the individual events and pinwiggles that occur within an RTL simulation with one or a few function calls, and the result is much faster simulation. A typical use case for transaction level modelling is building virtual platform models. Virtual platform models are constructed of today's large systems on a chip, which would typically include multiple processor calls, multiple software stacks, multiple buses and bridges between those buses, and many, many digital and analog hardware IP blocks. And the purpose of transaction level modeling in that context and the virtual platform model is to perform architectural exploration and performance analysis, to use the virtual platform for doing application software development, and finally, as a golden reference model for hardware verification. The name of the game here is to take IP, IP blocks, or more strictly, transaction level models of IP blocks, from multiple sources and have them all play together. The main characteristics of a virtual platform is that it needs to be register accurate and functionally complete, contain a minimal, minimum amount of implementation detail, so typically no clocks or pins, and only loose or approximate timing information. Because above all things, it must be fast, fast enough to boot operating systems and run application software, and it must be available early. It must be available months before the RTL code, otherwise the very purpose of the virtual platform disappears. It also has to be sufficiently accurate to stay in use once the RTL and hardware design itself becomes available. System C and transaction level modelling really plays the role of glue in joining together um, individual functional models of the various pieces of IP in the system. So system C and transaction level models can be used to construct wrappers around the individual functional cores in order to enable fast and interoperable models. Now let's have a look at TLM 2.0 in particular, the OSCE standard. TLM 2.0 targets transaction level models of memory map buses in particular, and the reason for that is to support virtual platform modelling of today's system on chips. So TLM 2.0 is layered on top of the System C standard, which is in turn a C++ class library. TLM 2.0 was released back in June of 2008, and we're currently working on a language reference manual to define TLM 2.0, which in time will become its own IEEE standard. The two watchwords in the development of the TLM 2.0 standard were speed, meaning simulation speed, and interoperability, the ability to take transaction level models from different sources and have them play together. TLM 2.0 is architected into three layers. The foundation layer is a set of mechanisms. These are the definitive C++ API for TLM 2.0. So this includes blocking and non-blocking interfaces, the direct memory interface, the quantum keeper, sockets, generic payload and phases. And it's these mechanisms, the core mechanisms of TLM 2.0, that ensure interoperability. Layered on top of these mechanisms are a couple of, couple of coding styles, the loosely timed and the approximately timed coding style. The coding styles are not normative, they're just coding guidelines helping you to make best use of the API. So the coding styles themselves are not necessary for interoperability. Then those coding styles are put into service for the various use cases, and TLM2 particularly addresses software development, software performance estimation, 
architectural analysis and performance modelling, and hardware verification. Now let's dive down to those two coding styles in a little bit more detail. So the loosely timed coding style pretty much means run as fast as possible. So the idea is to include only sufficient timing detail to boot operating systems and run multi-core systems. In order to achieve as fast as possible simulation, there are two primary tricks in use, temporal decoupling and DMI on the direct memory interface. So temporal, temporal decoupling refers to allowing system C processes to run ahead of simulation time and by doing so to minimise the amount of context switching that occurs during a system C simulation. And that has a significant impact on simulation speed. Transactions within the loosely timed coding style complete in just a single function call with minimal timing information, which also of course contributes to speed. Finally, the direct memory interface is a software API that gives models of initiators typically CPUs or instruction set simulators, direct access to an area of memory in the target, bypassing the transaction mechanism and therefore further increasing simulation speed. In contrast to the loosely timed coding style, the approximately timed coding style adds just enough timing information for architectural exploration and performance modelling. Just enough means pretty much whatever you want it to mean, but um, it typically corresponds with what you might call cycle approximate or cycle count accurate coding. So in the approximately timed coding style, system C processes run in lockstep with the system C timestamp. So that's pretty much what you might call the classic system C coding style. Each transaction can have multiple timing points. The default there is four timing points, but that is extensible for modelling specific protocols. At the heart of TLM 2.0 is the interoperability layer. It's the interoperability layer that allows models from different sources to play together. So the game here is to take transaction level models written by different people at different times, integrate them within a single simulation model and have them work quickly and effectively. So the TLM2 interoperability level layer achieves that with three steps. Step one is to make use of the TLM2 core interfaces and sockets. So each TLM2 initiator and target will instantiate a socket and those sockets allow function calls using the core interfaces. The second step is to make use of the generic payload. So the generic payload captures a set of attributes that are typical of memory map buses. And it's a generic payload transaction that's passed through the sockets between the various TLM2 components. The third step is to use the base protocol. So the base protocol defines a set of phases, marking the beginning and the end of a request and a response, and also captures a set of rules that are used by the initiator and target when making function calls through those standard sockets and passing that standard generic payload backwards and forwards. Well, we at DoLoss offer training. If you found this session useful and you want to hear more, you might like to check out our System C training classes and also the training classes that we offer in System Verilog, VHDL, Verilog and other EDA language standards. For further information, in particular a set of tutorials on TLM2 and a TLM2 protocol checker, have a browse around our website www.dulos.com where you'll find lots of interesting resources.